tonight on Y News. The Armed Forces of the Philippines forms a board of inquiry to determine what could have failed in the airstrike in Marawi City yesterday that killed 11 soldiers. The government confirms a total of 120 Maute members killed in Marawi clash, including eight foreign terrorists. President Rodrigo Duterte orders a wipeout of ISIS-linked groups in the Philippines. Concerned agencies have finalized preparations for the opening of classes on Monday. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources reports a significant drop in air pollution level in Metro Manila. And adults will be inspired by young wizards in the National Spelling Bee in the U.S. Why News begins now. From the UNTV News and Rescue Command Center, this is Why News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Armed Forces of the Philippines has created a board of inquiry after 11 soldiers were killed in a military airstrike yesterday in Marawi City. Grace Kasin explains why. The Armed Forces of the Philippines has confirmed that 11 soldiers were killed while 7 were severely wounded during an airstrike in Marawi City yesterday. They were hit by a bomb from a military SF-260 warrior aircraft that failed to hit its target. AFP spokesperson Brigadier General Residuto Padilla says the troops were conducting position close air support when the incident happened. It means the pilot of the warrior aircraft is depending its target on the command on the ground as to where to drop the bomb. The AFP has formed a board of inquiry to determine who committed errors and what appropriate penalties to impose. Since instead of hitting the mounted terrorist group, the bomb hit the soldiers. It was unfortunate that the last ordnance round it delivered went wayward for an unknown reason and accidentally hit and cost the lives of our ground forces. May tatlong pagkataon na nabigyan ng target ang SF-260 at matagumpay niya at maayos niyang natira o na pukso, na pukso itong uh, target na ito. Pero sa sinamang palad, ang pang-apat na pagkataon, may nangyari po na hindi bumagsak yung ating impanyang bomba sa dapat pagsakali. The SF-260 warrior aircraft was made from Italy and was used as trainer aircraft, but it was converted into a warrior aircraft. The government is now using two SF-260 warrior aircraft in its offensive in Marawi City. Because of the incident, Defense Secretary Delfil Lorenzana directed his men to lessen the number of airstrikes they conduct in Marawi City. Si General Bautista at si General Galvez to uh, determine kung kailangan pa nila na airstrikes doon, uh, especially now that there are more troops uh, operating on the ground and the chances of hitting our own troops is uh, very big like what happened yesterday. And um, siguro we have to uh, limit the airstrikes. The AFP meanwhile assures that the directive will not affect the offensive the military conducts in Marawi against the terrorist group. Ang airstrike ay isa lamang sa mga ginagamit natin uh, mga kagamitan. At uh, kung aking babalikan yung statement, sinabi natin na we employ armor, artillery, and air power capabilities to support our infantry units. The AFP will now conduct inspections of their armaments to ensure that it is in right condition before being used against terrorist Maute group and to prevent a repeat of the incident. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Aguinaldo. Senate President Coco Pimentel believes that it is necessary to review the policies of the Armed Forces of the Philippines regarding the conduct of air strikes. This following the recent airstrike that failed its target and hit government troops in Marawi City. Pimentel says the military has to revise its tactics and the technology being used in such operations. Huwag sila masyado maniwala nakarelay sa technology. Sabi nila, ipasok lang daw yung coordinates, doon natatama yung bomba. 
Well, you double check in the on paper. The Armed Forces of the Philippines says the number of Maute members in Marawi City is now reduced. Victor Cosare explains why. The military couldn't ascertain the exact number of Maute members injured in the ongoing crossfire in Marawi City. But the AFP confirmed that as of today, the latest count of fatalities on the part of the terrorist group is now 120. Authorities also have recovered 98 firearms. However, the military also confirmed that the Maute group has joined forces with the Abu Sayyaf group and other lawless elements in the area to go against the government forces. More than 30 were killed and over 70 were injured from the military military and police, including those who were killed in yesterday's airstrike. AFP says the Maute group has taken over still the center of Marawi City, particularly Barangay Bangolo. The operation is tough and risky because the bandits are positioned on high buildings with the hostages. Those uh, uh, enemies are using uh, high-rise buildings. Uh, they're placing their uh, sniper uh, uh, capabilities. Their uh, battle position. So, that the local terrorist group is using uh, children and women as enemy shield or as human shield. Meanwhile, Provincial Management Crisis Action Committee spokesperson Zia Alonto Adiong confirmed that a foreign national was killed in the encounter yesterday. Adyong also believes that Isnilon Hapilon, the alleged ISIS leader in the Philippines, is still in Marawi City. Meanwhile, authorities continue to appeal to evacuees not to return yet to Marawi City. As of now, we still have an ongoing military operation and we encourage our, our civilians who are in the evacuation centers, who are living in there with their families in cities in Iligan or in Cagayan de Oro, to remain there and not to come back, not to return yet. Uh, because, again, the situation is still volatile. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The military believes many foreign terrorists fight side by side with local terrorist groups. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Eight foreign terrorists are among the 120 terrorists killed in the military and police operations against the ISIS-influenced local terrorist groups in Marawi City. This include two Saudis, two Malaysians, two Indonesians, one Yemeni and a Chechnya who are ISIS members. They are ISIS members, yeah. Because the report that we got from the civilians in, from Marawi is that they saw a lot of foreign-looking uh, uh, fighters. Secretary Lorenzana also revealed that the Maute terrorist group have a lot of money to entice loyalists. Based on reports, they have supporters who came from Maguindanao. The official also confirmed that based on intelligence reports, Esnilon Hapilon receives big amount of funds from the Middle East. Hapilon is the emir or leader of the Islamic State forces in the Philippines. Esnilon, particularly, uh, we heard from our intelligence that she has received uh, several million dollars worth of uh, funds from, uh, from the Middle East. That's why... Secretary Lorenzana also said there are around 50 to 100 remaining terrorists still being pursued by the military and police. They are still gaining foothold in an urban area in Marawi City. This is the remaining number of members from the 500 forces who attacked Marawi City on the first day of the conflict. They are broken down as 260 Mautia members. Around 100 Abu Sayyaf members from Basilan led by Isnilon Habilon, while the rest are members of local armed groups. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. PNP Chief Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa orders a search for six Marawi City policemen. Grace Casin will tell us why. Six Marawi cops are missing amid the government's offensive against the mounted terrorist group. The PNP says the missing cops were among the first to respond when the crisis in Marawi broke out. De La Rosa says based on the intel report the PNP received, the missing police non-commissioned officer were caught in a crossfire. Tinanong ko yung chief of police, ay yung provincial director, kung tingin mo buhay pa o ano na nangyari doon. Uh, mukhang buhay pa naman daw. Also, the police chief confirms that the Maute group seized an armored personal carrier of the PNP amid a special action forces firefight against the terrorists. The terrorist group has also taken some high-caliber firearms inside the tank, says De La Rosa. Hindi naman nawawala 
uh, iniwan doon dahil naipit nga na nalaglag sa kanal, sumabog yung gulong, nalaglag sa kanal, hindi na makamaneover, tapos wounded yung uh, mga police natin na crew, so nag-withdraw sila dahil uh, heavy yung volume of fire ng kalaban. Three were killed and three other were injured on the part of the police in the ongoing clashes in Marawi City. The PNP chief has ordered cops in Visayas and Luzon to prepare for possible deployment to the conflict-torn area. The PNP is also helping in guarding all exit and entry points in Marawi City to avoid a spillover to other areas of the incident. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. President Rodrigo Duterte orders a total wipeout of ISIS-linked groups in the country. Rosalie Cos tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte revealed that it has been a long-time plan for ISIS to attack Marawi City. Alam mo yung rebellion ngayon sa Mindanao? It's not Maute. It's purely ISIS with different brands kasi sila yung nag-umpisa. Itong, itong Marawi na ito has long been planned. It could not be just a decision now, let's go to Mindanao. Plano na ito lahat. Thus, he wants the military and police to ensure the neutralization of each ISIS-inspired armed group in the country. On my orders are, uh, since this is war, I did not ask for it. The people, hindi naman nila hiningi. If it's war, my orders really are to wipe them out. Everyone. Better, if you shoot him in the head, shoot it again in the heart. Para sigurado. Otherwise, hindi ka maka-escapo yan, hindi ka mahuli. The president stresses that no less than himself will ask to lift martial law in Mindanao only after peace and order is ensured. That's why the president is asking for utmost understanding from Congress since the military is facing to resolve three major problems. Terrorism illegal drugs, and criminalities. I am one of those who are really hurrying it up. The earlier we attain uh, the equanimity of the community, the stability, I'd be the first to clamor for the lifting of martial law. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. The Department of Justice will issue a new order for the immediate arrest of suspected Mounty Group members who will show up in immigration counters. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. Martial Law Administrator Secretary Delphine Lorenzana has issued an arrest order against 825 suspected members of the Mauti Group. It is expected that some of them will try to flee the country to avoid arrest. For this reason, DOJ will be issuing a detention order for the immediate arrest and detention of Mauti members who will show up at immigration counters. Kinakailangan natin ng new names to warn our uh, Bureau of Immigration Officers or anybody na these are dangerous people na maaaring that uh, they are subject to arrest immediately. DOJ has already issued a lookout bulletin order directing immigration personnel to monitor foreign trips of multi-group members. Meanwhile, five prosecution panels were designated to handle the rebellion and terrorism charges that are to be filed against members of Mauti Group. The cases will be heard in Iligan City following the transfer of Marawi courts due to the attacks. Five prosecutors per panel. Eh. So, titingnan lang namin if we would have the uh, manpower para mapadala namin sa Iligan City. It is still unknown how many Mauti members have already been arrested or have surrendered. But Secretary Aguirre says charges must be filed immediately. Marami nang arresto. So, since the uh, privilege of the writ of habeas corpus has been suspended, so may tatlong araw yung maresto within which to file the appropriate cases. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Two members of the Maute family who presented themselves before the NBI yesterday were cleared of terrorist links. NBI Deputy Director and Spokesperson Attorney Ferdinand Lavin says the Maute boys, aged 2 and 10 years old, have nothing to do with the terrorist attacks in Marawi City. Sixteen other members of the Maute clan, mostly women, are undergoing procedures before the NBI, also aiming to clear their names. Their lawyer, Attorney 
Dalumilang uh, Farahiman said they are legitimate businessmen and are in no way connected with the Maute terrorists. A local government of Cebu has expressed readiness to help families affected by the conflict in Marawi City. Aiko Miguel tells us why. The local government of Cebu will distribute 1 million peso worth of rice to families affected by the ongoing clashes in Marawi City. In a meeting yesterday of several local Muslim leaders, Cebu City Mayor Tomas Osmeña says the funds for the donation will be taken from the city's disaster fund. The city council just needs to approve the donation before releasing it. The head of the Muslim Affairs Indigenous Community said they are ready to help in the distribution of the donations. Actually, makatabang yud ana sa mga victims na mga eksona to na mga Muslim, they are now crisis. The local governments of Davao and Sambuanga have initially sent aid to residents of Marawi City. Meanwhile, Sultan Naif of the Muslim Affairs Indigenous Community assures that the crisis in Marawi City will not spill over to Cebu. Tana na mga Cebu constituent and mga Cebu community leaders na very supportive to monitor especially the peace and order. Naif also assures that there remains good relationship between the government and the Muslim community in Cebu. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, will tighten its measures in accepting applications for exemptions in the number coding scheme. MMDA will thoroughly screen all applications to ensure that only qualified motorists will be given exemptions. The move is also to minimize the volume of vehicles and eventually ease traffic flow in Metro Manila. Currently, there are around 300 applications for exemptions still pending at the MMDA. The number coding scheme in Metro Manila is effective from Mondays to Fridays or from 7 in the morning to 8 in the evening. Next on Y News. Concerned agencies finalize preparations for the opening of classes on Monday. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources reports a significant drop in air pollution level in Metro Manila. Y News will be right back. Let me just uh, tell everybody that uh, I have declared martial law for Mindanao. Malacanang shrugs of critics of President Duterte's declaration of martial law in Mindanao. Nel Marie Bohok discovers why. The group Akbayan will file a petition next week to question the basis of President Rodrigo Duterte for declaring martial law in Mindanao. It will also question the constitutionality of the refusal of Congress to hold a joint session after the declaration of military rule. Tingin namin yung sorcerary, no? Questioning and then yung unconstitutionality of the move by Congress. And at the same time, yung version of yung factual basis, the court should review it. It was really factual basis on the declaration of martial law. Even former senator and human rights lawyer Rene Sagisag is not convinced that the attack in Marawi City is an act of rebellion or invasion, which are primary reasons why the president proclaimed martial law. Uh, rebellion, to me, parang parang insurrection lang yun eh. Oh, maybe sedition. In other words, to me, it's falls far short of invasion or rebellion. For its part, Malacanang says it is not concerned over the plan of several groups to question the declaration of the president. They should just go ahead and do what they think they need to do. The leaderships of both houses of Congress have initially insisted that there is no need for a joint session as majority of lawmakers support the action of President Duterte. Nel Maribujo, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The public should not worry about possible abuses during the implementation of martial law in Mindanao, according to a lawmaker. Luis Balancha explains why. PBA Party List Representative Jericho Nograles, one of the congressmen who expressed support to the president's declaration, says there has not been any case reported to him about human rights abuses in areas where military rule is being implemented. So far, as far as I'm concerned, wala pa po akong nakuhang reports 
from Surigao del Sur, from the whole of Region 11, from the whole of Sarangani, South Cotabato, North Cotabato, even in the province of Sulu. He adds if there are some concerns from his constituents, he immediately informs the chief of police. Ang nakukuha ko pong report ay report ng mga suspicious activities na ako mismo pinoforward ko yung mga reports na ito kay Bato de la Rosa. Dinediretso ko sa Chief PNP para sila mag-verify. The Commission on Human Rights has not yet released data on the reported cases of human rights violations in Mindanao but says their team has arrived in the area to monitor the situation. For human rights lawyer attorney Rene Sagisag, the public should monitor closely the implementation of military rule saying the president might be just testing the grounds for the possible nationwide implementation. Ayun nga, ay tinitingnan kung hanggang dahil sinasabi niya mas marahas daw ng ano eh yun nga pinapaalala ko lang February 7 and 8 1974 Holo was raised burned to the ground and 20,000 Christians Muslims uh, Chinese and others were killed on the other hand another supporter of martial law acts OFW party list representative John Bertis says there are ways within people can report immediately to authorities any possible case of abuse. Merong recommendation kasi na isa sa aming mga kasama na magkaroon ng uh, hotline uh, in terms sa buong uh, Mindanao region na pwede nilang matawagan if there, if there are any abuses uh, on the ground na nangyayari. Joyce Balancho, UHCB News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Senate says it will look into some of the provisions of the tax reform package of the administration that was approved in the lower house, specifically the, the excise tax on petroleum products. Nel Maribuhok explains why. The lower house of Congress has approved the first tax reform package of the Duterte administration. Included in the package is the tax exemption on workers with annual incomes of up to 250,000 and the increase of the amount of tax-free bonuses to 100,000 pesos from then 82,000. With the tax reform bill now on Senate's hand, Senate President Coco Pimentel is bent on looking into the provisions of the excise tax on petroleum products. Kailangan kasi kailangan din na nagti advantage na yung mga even yung mga mayayaman sa sa low tax on the diesel. So kailangan na pong i-update na yung tax. Pero ang ang, ang aming adaki here is to calibrate not to shock the entire system na ang laki ng jump nung uh, ang laki ng jump nung uh, cost or the price of uh, diesel. Once the tax reform package gets approved by the Senate and turned into law within this year, excise tax on petroleum products will be implemented in three tranches. Seen to take effect in January 2018 is a 2 to 3 peso increase on oil and gasoline, such as lubricating oil, leaded and unleaded gasoline, and a 4 peso increase in aviation jet fuel. Kerosene and diesel products, which currently are not imposed with taxes, will soon be charged with a 3 pesos excise tax effective January 2018. The Senate will also look into the tax exemption provisions of the said law. Mar maraming mga ex current exemptions which we are lifting or erasing. So marami rin umaangal. But you know, uh, if you want a modern uh, country, a modern society, uh, a, more, a fairer society, then we really have to have uh, funds to, you know, to, to improve our society. Senator Pimentel is confident that the Senate will approve the tax reform package before the year ends and will sure to take effect in January 2018. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Members of the Philippine Coast Guard are currently in a joint training with marine experts from Japan Coast Guard. Robby de Guzman will tell us why. The Philippines and the Japanese Coast Guards are currently holding a joint maritime law enforcement exercises in the waters of Davao City. This morning, Japanese vessel docked in Saksa Wharf in Davao City for the drill. Basically, to train the Philippine Coast Guard to perform better, kumbaga may improve yung ating uh, operational skill. Saka magkaroon ng confidence build-up. 
Together with Japanese Coast Guard Marine experts, 20 PCG personnel are now engaged in rubber boat training operation. Meanwhile, the vessel will sail to Samal Island in Davao del Norte on Saturday for the last day of the training. The June 3, we will all go out at sea. Uh, mga 20 miles from here, uh, doon kami mag-conduct uh, ng uh, simultaneous exercise, uh, different maneuvering and demonstration by rubber boats as well as capabilities ng ating uh, bagong barko, yung MRRB. The training is part of the signed memorandum of cooperation between the two countries towards strengthening the capacity of both Coast Guard units in terms of emergency response. Robbie De Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Over 100 overseas Filipinos who availed of Saudi Arabia's amnesty program have returned to the Philippines. They first met with representatives of Overseas Workers Welfare Administration or OWA and Department of Social Welfare and Development to discuss the assistance they will receive. This includes 5,000 pesos financial aid as well as tickets to their provinces. Among the batch are mostly mothers and children. These overseas Filipinos are part of those 5,000 who availed of the amnesty program. With three days left before the opening of classes on Monday, the Department of Education leads an interagency command conference this morning. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Representatives from the DILG, PNP, MMDA, DOH, PAGASA, OCD and other concerned agencies present their plans for the coming opening of classes. These agencies will do extensive monitoring in 778 public schools in Metro Manila. Around 12,000 PNP personnel, on the other hand, will be focusing on the security of the teachers, students, and parents. Police assistance desk will also be put in place in different areas in Metro Manila. And aside from that, is meron din tayong mga covert na mga personnel na nagmo-monitor kung meron ng threat o wala. As police operations will still continue. The the MMDA will deploy more than 2,000 traffic enforcers in areas near the schools as well as in bus terminals and train stations. The DepEd will also be in close coordination with the PAGASA, DILG and the Office of the Civil Defense for weather forecasts and advisories of class cancellation due to heavy rains by June and July. Kahit po normal yung ulan, ito po yung season natin na talagang binabaha po yung ating mga uh, portions ng western sections po ng Luzon dahil kasama po ang Metro Manila dyan. Kailangan po nakahanda tayo pero kung meron pong uh, extreme na inaasahan, ito po ay i-anunsyo natin. Meanwhile, DepEd has postponed the opening of classes in Marawi City and in eight barangays in Lanao del Sur and Iligan City. Based on DepEd's record, there are 5,000 students who are among the evacuees in Iligan City. The DepEd and the DOH will also implement a psychosocial assistance to free young people of trauma after experiencing the Marawi crisis. To ensure the safety of the children in the opening of classes on Monday, the security level in the National Capital Region has been raised to blue alert status in line with the ongoing conflict in Mindanao. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, will deploy about 2,000 traffic enforcers in the opening of classes on Monday. John Nano will tell us why. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, lays down its plan to ease the expected 30% increase in the volume of vehicles during the return to school of more than 26 million students on Monday. The MMDA will deploy 2,000 traffic enforcers to help in managing traffic. They will be positioned in various public schools across Metro Manila. Aside from managing traffic, the MMDA also orders its men to help in maintaining order in the vicinity of schools and to assist crossing pedestrians. Mostly, we concentrate tayo sa mga public schools along national roads. No? Uh, like for example, EDSA, C5, Commonwealth, Santolan, Bonserrano, Aurora Boulevard. So yung mga public schools dyan, magde-deploy tayo ating mga enforcers uh, para makita lang ng ating mga estudyante yung presence ng ating mga personnel to guide them yung pagtawid niyan. Delikado, may mga bata dyan, bababa sa PUV, mga loading-unloading. 
So, we will just make sure na masunod yung mga signs natin. The agency adds it will not implement new traffic scheme this opening of classes. Instead, it reminds motorists about the importance of discipline and of following the law to ease traffic woes. Let's go back to basic. Yan naman ang bottom line na. It's, it's a basic. You follow rules. Uh, sabi nga rin ni Chairman, ang talagang cost lagi niyan is corruption. So, talagang kailangan natin is discipline. MMDA Chairman Danilo Lim is set to make rounds in various schools beginning tomorrow to check on the situation and the ways employed by schools to properly manage traffic in their area, particularly private schools. The agency vows to take the necessary steps to address traffic congestion in Metro Manila. The agency is also asking for the public's understanding and patience. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. The Commission on Higher Education says all university and college students is automatically covered by the free tuition program for the government. Monokson explains why. Ang automatic basta nasa state university ka, kasama ka sa ipoprocess uh, para sa free tuition fee. At uh, mayroong proseso. Ang importante, makapag-coordinate sila sa school authority. All existing scholars of the government can still benefit from the free tuition. However, the government will prioritize indigent students. Students not under any scholarship grant will be ranked according to economic status. They just need to submit one proof of income, such as an income tax return of a family member, or any government-issued document that indicates income earnings. Kyla is relieved because she will save 24,000 pesos this school year for availing the free tuition program of the government. She is now a fourth-year college student at the University of the Philippines, majoring in statistics. She has an existing scholarship grant. Kung yung bibigay po ng UP na free tuition ay free tuition lang, tapos yun po sa existing uh, tuition ko, meron po akong book allowance, ganyan. Mas pipiliin ko na po yung may book allowance po ako. Meanwhile, Joshua, who is taking up linguistic, is quite disappointed, thinking he will not fully benefit from the free tuition program. Joshua will only save around 300 pesos only from free tuition because he needs to pay more for miscellaneous fees. Eh kung pwede, since state university and college naman kami, baka pwedeng isuggest namin dun sa uh, administration ng PUP na babaan like yung SIS fee na 225. Baka pwedeng babaan nila tapos yung energy fee ng iba-ibang college. Chad clarifies that the free tuition program is only effective this school year 2017 to 2018. A bill must be passed in Congress to exclude the fund for the free tuition from the General Appropriations Act. Once enacted into law, the fund for the free tuition program would be released automatically without going through congressional approval. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Based on the monitoring of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, there is a significant drop in the level of air pollution in Metro Manila. Ray Pelayo explains why. Motorized vehicles using petrol products are still the top contributors to air pollution. DNR says emissions from vehicles share 80% to air pollution, while the remaining 20% is contributed by stationary sources such as factories. The Philippines has 52 air quality monitoring stations in different parts of the country, which conducts the measurement of air pollution level. One of these stations is located in Namria compound in Taguig, just near the main road. On its website, www.airqualitymanila.com, pollution level in the area is already colored orange. This means that the level of air quality poses health hazards, especially to people with respiratory problems. So yung air monitoring data, uh, station, hindi siya, gagamitin siya para magpababa ng pollution. Kundi yung data mismo ang gagamitin natin para gamitin para may makapag-formulate tayo ng mga pulisiya o ordinansa. Based on DNR's data, within the period of 2004 to 2015, there was a significant reduction of pollution level in Metro Manila. This is because the total suspended particulate has already decreased from 170 to an annual average of 100 micrograms per normal cubic meters. In June 2016, the government has started introducing the use of Euro 4 fuel, a type of diesel and gasoline. It contains lesser sulfur and so it contributes less to air pollution. Sulina at crudo, pagdating sa uh, emission ay mag-expect tayong 
uh, lesser ang pollution nun. The European Union is in partnership with DNR in setting up air quality monitoring stations in the country. The bloc says the Philippines is not the only one with problems in air pollution but also other countries. An issue that cannot be solved country by country but it has to be solved through regional and global cooperation. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Taguig City. Coming up, the revitalized version of the classic Nokia 3310 goes on sale again. And it's Dobbs versus Cavs once more in the much-awaited NBA season finals. More from Y News after this break. The Canadian government is facing a great challenge as the population of senior citizens outnumbers the youth for the first time in history. Kim Pamintuan explains why. According to newly released Statistics Canada Census data, the number of Canadians aged 65 and over is now greater than the number younger than 50. For many, this is a cause for celebration. Canadians are living to greater ages. A record number of centenarians was also reported. Canadians being workaholic and low fertility levels are some of the reasons for the decreasing youth population. The first one to consider is their, their, their hook up with their jobs. Second one is they are Canadian people are very adventurous. Adventurous, they go somewhere else. Like they go to Asia, they go to Europe. The third one is Canadian are they want to raise a family, but in a simple way, in a simple way in the sense that they want to raise a family of one or two kids. That's what happened in Canada. According to Statistics Canada, this shift in the country's demographics will have a significant effect on the government. There will be lesser jobs available as there will be less people paying taxes. Meanwhile, more funds will be diverted for pensions and health care. To others, this demographic shift is a cause for concern. We won't be able to afford their retirement plans if there's not enough people working and more people retiring. Health care is going to suffer and more people are living longer, so we'll just have more issues overall if there's not a younger population to support them. The reduction in the number of taxpayers will be an ongoing challenge for the Canadian government as it faces a new demographic of citizens. Kim Pamintuan, UNTV News and Rescue, Toronto, Canada. Another heart-pounding action awaits UNTV Cup fans as the DOJ Justice Boosters meet the Senate Sentinels on Sunday. Victor Cosare will tell us why. Sentinels, led by Senator Joel Villanueva, beefs up their practices after experiencing two consecutive losses in the off-season games. You lucky na post talaga eh. Uh, siguro kulang sa practice pa, tsaka yung endurance. Generally, okay naman. Uh, we know that we'll be back. On the other hand, Coach John Agbayani Jr.'s side vows to work hard to topple the Sentinels. So, pag-aandaan na lang namin kung manalo-matalo, well... Sabi ko nga sa team namin, manalo matalo, basta laruin lang natin, wala tayong magiging ano dyan, problema tayo dyan. Yung effort lang dadagdagan namin, magagaling yung mga taga-senate. They're a complete team, so siguro maging cohesive pa kami lalo and uh, we learn to trust more each other. Meanwhile, top officials from both teams express their support to Mr. Public Service, Kuya Daniel Razon's Innovative Basketball League. Sa mga tagahanga po ng DOJ at ng UNTV Cup, manood po kayo sa mga susunod na laro. Exciting lahat, napakagandang liga po. Salamat po. This is always a chance na makipag-exchange ng, uh, you know, to be with each other na hindi laging official business. So it's a good way to really have that camaraderie. Uh, pangalawa, yung beneficiaries, napakahalaga. Watch out for the Justice Boosters Sentinels Clash to be aired on UNTV with live streaming by a UNTVweb.com. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Those are the reasons behind the news, June 1, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we delivered to you as they unfold, I'm Darlene Basingan. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why News?